All right, so uh, I just wanted to give a, a few brief talks about um, matrix groups for undergraduates. Um, in particular, I'm going to go through some of my notes, which are, of course, based on this book, Matrix Groups for Undergraduates by Christopher Tapp, um, the Student Mathematical Library, volume 29 of the American Mathematical Society. And, um, you know, it's nice. It's a little book, uh, pretty inexpensive. And um, I really, I love the style of this book. It's, it's just, it's really wonderful. Um, you get so much uh, for such a short read. You, you know, you get to see uh, lots of really interesting results about these matrix groups and, you know, a little bit of analysis, a little bit of topology, a lot of linear algebra, and um, a view towards some of the more significant uh, classification results for compactly, uh, compactly groups. Um, you know, begin to appreciate what these exceptional algebras are. There's just um, in maximal tori. There's so much, so much to learn in this little, little book. And I'm just going to show you um, in these in these talks just the, the the skeleton of this book. Really, there's so much more in the, in the book um, that's interesting and, and and worthy of study. So here I'm just giving you some some very very narrow, um, you know, like a skeleton of the book. And so. If you wanted to dig deeper, of course, you could start with this book. There are lots of references for the things I don't go through. In the book, there are some proofs which I don't give. Um, and then, of course, there are there are more there are there are more lengthy books which have even yet more details. Um, but anyway, so let's get let's get, let's get to it. So we're going to study, um, in particular, associative real division algebras. Um, so the reals, the complexes, and the quaternions. Uh, reals, complex, quaternions. Um, these are the only associated real division algebras up to isomorphism. This is a result of Frobenius. And, well, anyway, I'm going to try to get all the history of it here. But uh, we use the symbol K as a general symbol to indicate any three of these, any of these cases, all right? So, of course, these are related to one another in terms of direct sum decompositions. You can, as a vector space over the reals, these are all real vector spaces in a very natural way. And um, so our first order of business is to investigate how these are related and how they're different um, as, as vector spaces, but also as algebras. And, you know, the quintessential tool of um, studying an algebra is that of, of matrix algebras. We can always take an algebra, an abstract algebra. I, always is probably too strong a term, but many times we can take an abstract algebra and represent it in terms of some faithful... Um, representation of a, a set of matrices where the multiplication of the algebra becomes a simple multiplication of, of matrices. And so that's kind of our first order of business here. Um, anyway, just a little bit more. Of course, it's impossible to put division algebra um, over, uh, over R um, on Rn except for these cases. Um, <clears throat> there are other multiplications, all right? A multiplication. So if I have a vector space, which is, you know, up to a choice of basis and everything, it's just Rn. Um, so if I basically if I have Rn and I put a multiplication on it, I can I can do that. I can define different algebras for Rn. But when I when I do that, those other non-isomorphic algebras to these um, have zero divisors, right? So there's not a well-defined notion of division for all non-zero elements. These these are the division algebras, all right, in the natural sense. Um, okay, so some notation. I use KMN like this for the M by N matrices over K. Here are the square matrices of order N over K. Um, the rules for the matrix algebra, which we're going to use, pretty simple. Um, two matrices are equal if and only if all of their components match up. Um, you multiply matrices in the usual way, <coughs> excuse me, built from the multiplication of the K elements which could be something interesting, right? It could be complex or quaternionic multiplication, but still matrices of com complexes or quaternions built in the same way as we do for, um, you know, over the reals. Now here I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the student who's had a boring linear algebra like mine where we almost do everything in the reals. If you have been so blessed as to have a linear algebra where you do it over a more arbitrary set of objects than some of these things I'm telling you are old hat. Um, Anyway, so here's the addition of matrices, here's scalar multiplication, and um, this, of course, is for matrices over K. Now, 
So our notation is that Kn is a set of row vectors. And um, this stands in contrast to most of my other, if you read anything else I've written, almost without exception, if I talk about the end tuples over the field, I am talking about column vectors. But here, he uh, has things set up for row vectors. And um, fine, whatever, choices. Maybe he's left-handed or something. Yeah. But uh, a left vector space is a, <coughs> a set M which has a notion of addition, which is commutative, so it's an abelian group with respect to addition. You got zero, it's closed under additive inverses, all the good stuff. And you've got this scalar multiplication, which interfaces with the, um, you know. So here, maybe I would, maybe I would just make that juxtaposition. So we'll, we usually just use <clears throat> juxtaposition for the multiplication in the algebra, you see. And so this is scalar multiplication in the left vector space. This is just multiplication in K. So I'll just use juxtaposition there. Um, of course, one the scalar multiple of one just is you know it gives you back where you start with, and you have these two distributive properties. This gives you a left vector space, and a right vector space is defined very similarly, except the scalar multiplication would be on the right and some other things. But um, well, anyway, the left versus right is due to the care which we must afford the non-commutative quaternions H. All right, so we will regard the M by N matrices over K as a left vector space over K, and um, Kn is, is rows, all right. So for example, Kn, in terms of the matrix notations, M1 by N over K. All right, definition. So V1 and V2 are left vector spaces over K. A function is so-called so K-linear, if and only if um, we have, right here, we have what? We have um, for all A and B in the, in the K, and for all X and Y in, in V1, we have this, this linearity condition. We can pull scalars out to the left. Um, so, in my other work, I would probably call that left linear, because you can pull scalars out. Um, Well, let me, let me not talk about that. Left, right, whatever. Um, now there are, <clears throat> let's leave other works to other works. Let me, let me focus here. Now, um, sorry about the washing machine noise, if you can hear it. I know I can hear it. Um, so if I have a, a, a matrix, and, and by a matrix of a K, I can define the right multiplication and left multiplication maps like this. Now, there, okay, it's not exactly left multiplication, but it's, it's, these are different uh, morphisms, as we'll see shortly, um, because we're going to, well, let me just get to it. These are special maps. The transpose is because we're working with rows. Like, usually I would have LA as just AX, and that would be fine if X is a column. I can write AX sensibly if X is a column, but of course if X is a row, I can write XA as a matrix col as a row, co row matrix multiplication, right? And so here's a row column multiplication. But to convert it back to a row again, I transpose once more. That may be a little bit new to those of you who are so used to working with columns. Now, nice things happen over Kn. In particular, we have the composition um, of the left maps is the is the left map of the product, and likewise the right. Um, I'm not sure these are left or right. I'm just say L and the R maps are are. Um, oh, look at that! I thought that R was a homomorphism. It's actually an anti. It's an anti-homomorphism. See, the, the order is reversed. Um, this would actually be the product of A and B in the opposite algebra, as it's known. The opposite algebra, is it just reverses the order of the products. But anyway, more on that for another day. Um, so any k-linear mapping from kn to km is also a matrix multiplication with respect to some n by n matrix over k. There's a fundamental theorem of, of, of k-linear algebra. In other words, every every linear map is represented by a matrix multiplication, and vice versa. Um, these are k-linear maps, and this is k-linear. Um, we also have a standard basis, as usual. <clears throat> as usual, the standard basis is just e1 through en, with ones in just one spot and zero elsewhere. Except these are rows. All right. Again, these are rows. We can also talk about a general linear group over k. General linear group. Um, well, it's a group, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
so it's the set of invertible matrices, all right? And um, it's not hard to prove a little proposition that, in fact, it is, so what it is, is it's, it's those matrices for which the, um, I'm going to call them right, the, the, the right maps, the RA map anyway is a linear isomorphism. So, like, okay, well, what A is not in here? Well, for example, if, if A has linearly dependent columns, of course, that gives you a non-trivial kernel, hence RA fails to be um, injective, and so it's not an isomorphism. And, or you could see it as a failure to span KN, whatever. Um, anyway, so this you can view as the matrices of isomorphisms, right, over, over K. Now, in terms of determinant, it's simple as the inverse image of the non-zero reals if the K is equal to RC. All right, now there's a little bit more to say about quaternions. We'll get there when we get there. So let's talk about coordinate change and similarity. Well, for A, an M by, uh, N by M matrix over K and G in the general linear matrices over K, the matrix G A G inverse represents R A in the basis E1, G, E, N, da, 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 E, N, G. Um, and again, row matrix multiplication, right? So this is a little bit twisted from what I usually do because I work with columns, but here it is. Here's your, your coordinate change. So basically, if I choose different basis for, um, choose a different basis for KN, then the matrix for RA um, gets conjugated. This is, this is a conjugation by elements G and G inverse, of course. Now, ah, ah, come on. So you can see page tw 19 to 20 for more. In particular, uh, this is a natural consequence of the anti-homomorphism um, anti property I just mentioned. You notice that G and the G and the G inverse flip over, and um, the identity is the identity. It's anyway, it's the same song and dance as linear but for rows instead of columns. Now, anyway, so, great. Now, um, of course, it's an interesting exercise to prove, in fact, that the, um, you know, the general linear group actually is a, is, a, is a group, but it's not, you know, you could, you don't need, you don't need the product of the determinants. Um, you don't need the product of the determinants uh, to prove that, because you can just basically use properties of isomorphisms, like the composite of an isomorphism is an isomorphism, the inverse of an isomorphism is an isomorphism. The identity, the, um, the um, you know, the identity corresponds to the identity map, and um, so those things work together to be able to prove that the GLNK is in fact a, a group. It's close, it's associative, because, well, function addition is associative. Well, matrix multiplication is associative. <laughs> and um, anyway, so moving along. Here in this next bit, we're going to talk about how these, um, these mappings here give you uh, an image of the n by n complex matrices in the 2n by 2n real matrices. It occurs to me this is a very good time to stop and start again.